Hello. Welcome back to another week of Saturday Morning Stories. My name is Ian. Thanks for coming. I had an idea for story time today. During the summer, it is just so hot, and I am just sick of it. I want to read some books about when it's cold out. So I thought that we could do a winter story time in the summer. The first book is a classic. It's one of my all-time favorites. It's called The Mitten by Jan Brett. And it is a story about a mitten in the wintertime. The Mitten, a Ukrainian folktale adapted and illustrated by Jan Brett. And these pages are so beautiful. Pay attention when we're reading and look at the pictures on the side of the story too. You can always pause it and look and it'll give you some clues about what's going to happen in the story. Once there was a boy named Nicky who wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as snow. Look at that. Nice and cold. I could go for that right now. At first, his grandmother, Baba, did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll never find it. But Nikki wanted snow white mittens, and finally, Baba made them. After she finished, she said, When you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and sound, but then I will look to see if you still have your snow white mittens. So off Nicky went, and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. <gasps> oh no, look! Can you even see it in the snow? That's easy to lose. And again, like I said, here's some clues for what's going to happen next. I'm sorry, I'm going to hold the book closer, okay? A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside. It was cozy and warm and just the right size, so he decided to stay. Look at that. That is a mole going into the mitten. And look, we have these other pictures on the side too. So pay attention. That is a bunny. Gives us a clue what's going to happen next. A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. It was then that he saw the mitten and he wiggled in feet first. The mole didn't think there was room for both of them, but when he saw the rabbit's big kickers, he moved over. Look at them both squeezing in there. It's got to be bigger than any mitten I ever saw. Next, a hedgehog came sniffling along, snuffling along. That's what hedgehogs do, I guess. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue with someone covered with prickles, they made room. Ah, they're squeezed in so tight and he's got those prickles. Who is going to come along next to the mitten? As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, swooped down. When he decided to move in also, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they quietly, oh, sorry, no, they quickly let him in. Look at that owl's big talons. Are they all going to fit in there?
I guess so. Next, up through the snow appeared a badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left, but when they saw his diggers, they gave him the thumb. Look at that big badger. Look, the prickles are sticking out of the mitten. It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air, and a fox trotting by stopped to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave the fox lots of room. Look at them all squeezing in that mitten. It doesn't even look like a mitten anymore. Next, a great bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. The animals were packed in as tightly as could be. But what animal would argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged to many times its size. But Baba's good knitting held fast. Oh my goodness, they're all going to fit in that mitten. Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled into the one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the great bear's nose. Wow, they all fit in there. What do you think is going to happen next? The bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Ah, 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 chow! The force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. Look at them all go flying. On his way home, Nicky saw a white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. Look at that. As he ran to catch his Snow White Mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. First she looked to see if he was safe and sound, and then she saw that he still had his new mittens. Good as new, right? Just as he had had it before, except... I think that one mitten looks a little bit bigger than the other one. That is The Mitten by Jan Brett. I hope you liked that. I have another story that is also, it makes me feel cold, but it also is kind of like a fantasy. Like what if, even when it was hot out, we could still have snowmen all year. Snowmen all year. That looks pretty good to me. A snowman in the summer drinking some lemonade in a pool. That's a good way to keep cool, too. I love to build a snowman on freezing winter days. But when the sun is bright and warm, my snowman melts away. There's nothing but a puddle when my snowman disappears. If only he were magic and could stay with me all year. Wouldn't that be great? I teach him how to fly a kite high above the trees. Then we would dig for pirate gold or sail the seven seas. And remember, you can always pause and look at all these great drawings of things to do with your snowman.
I know that he would love to see the tigers at the zoo. And at my birthday party, we would celebrate his, too. Snowmen don't usually get to have birthday parties. We'd go on all the wildest rides at the amusement park. But best of all would be the fireworks lighting up the dark. Do you see any fireworks this summer? I bet there weren't any snowmen there. On stormy evenings, I would play my favorite games with him. On sunny days, I'd teach him how to dive and how to swim. <gasps> On summer evenings, in the dark, we'd chase some fireflies. That's one of my favorite things to do during the summer, too. Or sleep out in the quiet woods beneath the starry skies. At the beach, we'd play all day. He'd get very sandy. We'd trick or treat on Halloween and bring home lots of candy. All right, so that's after the summer. That Halloween is coming up, though. Maybe this is magic snow that will not disappear, and this snowman will be the one to stay with me all year. Wouldn't that be nice to be able to do all that stuff with your snowman? Well, I hope that snowman all year gave you some good ideas for things to do during the summer, even if you can't do them with a the snowman. And... I uh, hope that that gave you a little bit of cold feeling on these hot, hot days. So thanks for coming to Saturday Morning Stories. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.